think we'll probably hear very little of that today. Today we're talking about relationships and health. Let's say you want to have kids with somebody. Um, what type Whoa, of- we're going there right away, huh? <laughs> we're going there. <laughs> what are some of like the worst things that could happen when it comes to like some, me and my partner. You die. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, that, that was, that, die. Crushing like financial medical debt that now everyone in the family has to shelter the burden of this. Why is it so hard to get on the same page with people we love about their health? When you change a habit or you change a behavior, it just becomes difficult for that person uh, to change at the same rate. A foodie compared to a hyper health individual. One person's gonna be going in thinking, okay, what is, what is the most optimum fuel source I can get? The other one's gonna be going into it with, what is the most amazing taste experience that I can have from this? I've had difficulty just taking off my coaching hat. One thing my wife has told me is like, listen, like you do this for a freaking living. Like I don't. One of the things that my wife always says about me is that I'm extreme. I try to make her do it the way I do it, but that's not how she operates. I've actually been told that I have like an interview process when I date people. Like I actually <laughs> kind of take them through a list of questions because I'm, I'm very particular with what I'm looking for. Welcome, everybody. This is the Good Life Visual Audio Podcast. I got Stu here. Say what's up, Stu. What's up, y'all? Kabi is also here. Say hello, sir. What up, dude? And he's got a new button, a new sound maker. <laughs> I, I think we'll probably hear very little of that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. We might have to start using the mute button, right, and start <laughs> muting them. But either way, I'm glad I'm glad he's got it. Guys, I'm Chris. As always, we're coming in diving into how to design your life with extraordinary health, wealth, and mindset. So as always, find us everywhere you listen and watch, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, leave us a review. Hit that thumbs up. Tell somebody about it because we got another good one for you today. We're diving into some health stuff. Could be talk to us about what we're talking about today before we dive in. Let's do it. Today we're talking about relationships and health. Now we could start out with relationships in terms of what's your significant other, but we're also gonna expand that to just people we love, talking about people, talking to people we love about their health and our health too, for that matter. Huge, huge topic, huge topic. And we're gonna dive in, but we're gonna make this customary over this next couple of weeks, guys, our, our mid-year event, our the Summer of Success event is coming up July 24th. We have it. We are planning for it. We are making sure that you, got, everyone that's listening is getting the value that they deserve to design the life that they want. This is our second event that we are doing to make sure that you all can get the intimate time one-on-one, -on -one, well, kind of in a group setting, but with us so that we can give you this information. Those of you that have been paying attention and following us week after week or checking in on the podcast or listening, again, you know that we are about adding value as all of us being coaches in our individual um, areas. We wanna be able to provide you with the tools, the resources, the information you need in order to perfect your health, perfect your, your, your money mindset and perfect your overall mindset um, in getting to where you wanna go. So. Sign up for the event. It's down there on the bottom of the screen, bit.ly forward slash TGL mid-year. That is gonna be the sign up link. Uh, share it with a friend, get, get some people there because it's going to be tons of value. Guys, you got anything to say about it, Stu? SOS for short, summer, summer of success, SOS. Honestly, uh, I'm just kind of messing around with that, but at the end of the day, the reason why we're having this event is because we spend a one week or one episode a week for an entire year of just like providing different types of value. Not everybody can make this. We bring as much as we can in a condensed format. So that way you guys can just get what you need in order to be successful this summer. Um, we've done this before. We've learned from it. It went really well the first time. 
we're going to bring even more of that this time. So you have nothing to lose and a bunch to gain by showing up. So just go ahead and sign up, and we look forward to seeing you there. I'll piggyback on what Sue just said, especially the last piece there. You know, you got nothing to lose and a lot to gain. The way we're approaching this is how much value can we pack in a short period of time for it's free, right? It is. Yeah, we're still doing this for free, golly. All right. Yeah, right, right. right. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 no it is. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a ton of value on all areas, on all four areas of life, or three areas of life, which really will be four. Um, I would highly suggest that you make some time and check it out. And then guess what? If you don't like it, you've lost nothing. And um, you'll definitely gain something. So give it a shot. And don't come alone. Invite a friend. Don't come alone. Invite a friend. Go ahead and sign up. Sign your friend up, too. So we know we know what, who who's showing up, and uh, don't wait to the last minute to sign up too. So we can know who's coming and how many folks you know how how many plates we got to get ready, how many plates right. we got to get ready because we all we all feel to eat. We're getting ready to eat. Hey, that's right, that's right. So we're excited. Go ahead and sign up for that. Um, share 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 with a friend coming up July twenty fourth. Uh, you can sign up actually. Those of you that are watching on LinkedIn, you can actually sign up on LinkedIn. There's an event. Uh, called summer of success event for the good life it's coming up in july you could sign up here on linkedin or you could go to that bitly link and get registered so into the show would you would you say Stu, as you ate a pineapple SOS, baby. <laughs> sos that's right we got to play around with that um as always guys if you want to dive in let's let's do a quick round of client stories Quick round of client takeaways. Again, as all of us being coaches, we see clients on a daily, weekly basis, some in person, some groups, some virtually, right? We do it all. But again, normally we're hearing some of the same things or getting some of the same takeaways as we talk to more and more people. So we want to be able to share those things with you. Gentlemen, who wants to start? If either one of you i'll take it right off top man since today it. we're talking about relationship and health one thing i'll share um is in kind of my observation in working with couples um especially in the solid food vacation uh groups and uh usually i run those for about 10 days uh we do five days and three days as well and then also coaching couples um you know in, in a in a two-on-one setting. Um, and one thing I've definitely noticed is <laughs> two things happen. Two things happen. Yeah, right. For sure, two things are gonna happen. They're either gonna get closer or they're gonna get further apart, right? <laughs> During the process. They're gonna get closer or further apart. And I find that the couples that that most couples actually get closer. All right. Most couples actually get closer. Uh, and it's all based on how they approach they approach it from their individual standpoint and whatever they have going on is usually going to be magnified. Whatever they have going on is usually going to be magnified. And I find that this is probably one of the best ways um, for couples to get closer is in taking on their individual health and their health as a family together. Uh, and just like, Couples take on, you know, whatever it is, their finances together, their whatnot together. Um, easier said than done. And that's what we're talking about today, how to make it a little bit easier. But I found that if you guys can, couples can tackle their health together, um, not only will they enjoy the the pleasures of life at a, at a higher level, uh, but they also will find each other differently um start to see each other differently and uh it's 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 it's, it's honestly one of like my favorite things uh in coaching is really coaching a couple that i don't i don't i'm not doing relationship coaching but it ends up they they kind of coach themselves <laughs> in in that setting by taking this on and so that, that's one thing i'll share if that's something you're thinking about doing um listen to this full episode first and then Go ahead and tap in because it is worth it. Awesome. Stu, <laughs> dive in, man. 
that fulfillment of uh, of end up bringing couples closer together by taking them through that process. That's really nice. Um, for me, uh, I had a a client finish off a three month working uh, relationship with me today, and what was really nice was to hear how, and honestly, just to see this over the three months, but to hear how he's had this shift in how he talks to himself and how he takes care of himself and responds to anxiety, worries, conflict. Like he just, he takes it on, he steps into it. He, he, he approaches it and attacks it rather than taking a passive back seat and letting the mind and the emotions and the conflict of day to day overwhelm him. It's really nice to hear that. Um, and actually he and another client both verbalized that just being able to have a container where either weekly or bi-weekly, depending on the relationship, they can like open up about what's going on in their life, what's going on in their mind and what they can do about that has just really helped them just make everything going on in their lives a smaller issue. As Jordan Peterson says, conflict delayed is conflict multiplied. So when you have somebody in your corner, like the three of us, for example, who's there to help you address your issues rather than letting your, your debt, your health, your mental health, your goals, your lifestyle, rather than letting all that stuff get out of control, having somebody that you can just repeatedly touch base with and, and maintain rather than recover is just a much smoother process. So it's really nice to be able to, to see him off and to kind of feel the shift that he's had. So it's awesome. That, that is awesome. Obviously finishing out that client, relationship almost like a personal relationship right like you leave a little bit that person leaves a little bit behind they take a little bit with you right or with them from you so again that's that's always special and when people are able to get that value it's huge um i'll wrap it up on my side with the kind of money takeaway and then we'll pass it over to kabi so he, we can dive into today's topic uh <clears throat> excuse me but the conversation that i've been having but really not fully having uh, is a basic, it's a back to basics conversation. And uh, you guys, if anyone's been paying attention to what we talk about here on The Good Life or specifically what I talk about is that financial foundation. We're living, we're about to go through, you know, a time where uh, discretionary incomes are going to get taken. And what I'm seeing happen is a lot of people are tightening down on their budget or tightening down on the, the tracking of their money because they're seeing their discretionary get squeezed out because fixed expenses are going up. Gas is going up, right? If, you know, cost of goods are going up, food is going up. All of these things are starting to go up. And if we spend at the same rate, which many people are still doing, spending at the same rate, you're going to have less and less money. And uh, we've been having the conversation a little bit with people, but really this is for everyone that's, that's listening. We got to start to make sure that as we head into this recession, which come by the time you hear this, you know, if you're listening to the podcast, we've already gotten into July, which means we will now probably have two quarters of a declining um, uh, economy, which means we will technically be in a recession. So once we're fully in that recession, understanding that your slowing has to has to slow down, right? Your spending, excuse me, your spending has to slow down in order for you to keep up, not to mention that inflation, right? Cost of goods is going up. We got to start to pay attention to the basics. What's coming in, what's going out, and really getting back to tracking that money and understanding that, hey, your discretionary is going to start getting a little bit lower over this next couple months or so, but it's time to pay attention to it. As always, we, we talk about awareness here on the show time to really get back in and become more aware of where your dollars are going. See how those fixed expenses are rising, how we have to cut variable costs even a bit more as the price of things go up because we don't want to dip into that discretionary income. So something to pay attention to. Unless you're moving in California, then you're going to dip in. No, just... <laughs> then you're dipping. You are shoveling. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah uh all right guys i i want to start off kind of by a series of just general questions to get us oh wait we're in a good spot to do that yeah to do what to hop right in dive let's right in let's i realize it. you didn't even i don't realize you didn't no, even, no, no, just, just just in. In. i want to hop right in by saying listen 
uh, a series of questions to kind of prime us to have this th this conversation today. First one being, you know, true or false, it's very important that as a couple, right, whether you're dating, married, um, whatever the whatever the other options are, cohabitation situationships. Uh, what was that? Situationships. Situationships. To be on the same page uh, in, re in regards to how you're going to handle your health. True or false, it's important? Yeah, like, it, like, like, or let's say one to 10. Mm -hmm. 10 being it is the, like, crucial. One being, eh. Uh, I'm going to put it high up there. I don't know about 10. I'm going to put it at eight. I'm put it at eight. Man, now I gotta say nine. <laughs> now nah, I, I, it really is high up there for sure. Okay, cool. So my follow-up question to you guys then is like, why why would you rate it at eight or nine? What what happens if you're not on the same page? <clears throat> you all right? Let's let's say I'm sorry, Chris. Go ahead. No, nah, dive in, bro. All right. So let's say let's say you want to have kids with somebody. Um, what type oh, of we're going there right away, huh? <laughs> we're going there. We're going right there. Yeah. When I when I date, I mean without a doubt, like I just I, I straight up I think about the future. I don't date to mess around. If I'm All right. to somebody, that's where I'm <laughs> ladies, going. beware. No beware, <laughs> beware. Well, one lady, beware. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't get in trouble on here. Um so when I think about the lifestyle that I want to have. I want to be active. I want to be able to travel. I want to be in shape. I want to be able to do sports, et cetera. I want my partner to be there with me. Um, I also want to set the bar just like my parents did for me of what it means to stay active and healthy and just how amazing and, and honestly long your life can be by staying healthy. And if I'm setting a good example, my partner's not setting a good example. Maybe they're doing the opposite. We're giving my kid conflicting messages. And I want my, my child to understand how health can just really, really make your life such an amazing experience. Or if you don't take care of it, it can be fear based. You may not have any control over your mental, your wallet, because you got all kinds of medical expenses. I don't want that example in the household. Got it. Got it. So you're coming from a family perspective, from setting a good example for the kids. Um, Chris, what's your take on this? So the question is, uh, yeah, re remind me how we worded the question just so I can make sure I'm answering it. Like, why so did I rate it an eight? Yeah, yeah. Why did, why did, why did you rate that uh, it's an eight out of ten importance of uh, being on the same page with your partner when it comes to your health? Yeah, I, I think it's a subjective question about, like, kind of health, like the, 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 the partner that you're with, right? To some, they might give it a ten. But for the partner that you're with, it might be that you can still make strides and you can still influence each other in the right direction, even if it's not like the most important thing or at the top of that list. It's high up because the other side, I believe, is true. If let's say, you know, the, again, Stu kind of gave the example, but let's just say that the that your spouse or your significant other is on the other side of the health conversation. Let's just say it's a fruit, vegetable, processed food conversation. They see everything's okay with processed food. You're on the fruit, vegetable side, whatever the case is. That will influence the child. That will influence decisions. That will influence kind of what happens in that household. But if if everything is not aligned, it doesn't mean that there can't be strides made to improve each other's health. That's why I put it the eight out of 10, not 10 out of 10. But I still think it's incredibly important to make sure that you're on the same page discussing these things with your significant other. So I'm, I'm curious, based on both, based on those answers, guys, I'm curious, you know, if um, what are some of let's give like five things. What are some of like the worst things that could happen when it comes to like some me and my partner, you and your partner? Like what are some? Worst case scenarios, if we put them out there, <clears throat> man, just dive right into the worst case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worst case scenarios that could come. Like, 
like you die. <laughs> All right. That, that, that was not die. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for that. Uh -huh. yeah. what what's kind of, what's kind of scary to me is, uh, <clears throat> death is very finite. Yes. That is, a, that is one of the top worst ones. I think the other one is like just crushing like financial medical debt and some type of condition that could have been avoided through a healthy lifestyle that now, everyone in the family has to shelter the burden of this yeah okay because okay. someone doesn't take preventative measures financial responsibilities right that and the emotional drain there's just there can be a lot so yeah. so for this for the i like that one so for this conversation uh can we say medical debt because chris what do you say about medical debt um you say you say you say medical debt is one of um i believe you say it's like unsecured debt, like what personal well, one money? of the things that gets that gets families into into like uh, oh yeah into into like deep deeper uh kind of areas of debt the, un, the unsecured debt personal loans medical bills credit card debt those are the things that start piling up for people that get them into deeper and deeper levels of debt because you don't right they can't come take it once you do the hospital have the hospital visit they can't take anything from you right, right. so that stuff just starts piling up on your credit and things Okay, but so we have two things right here: death, which is obviously terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, we have crushing medical medical debt. So, uh, in terms of finances, but for this specific conversation, in terms of financial things, what else? Like worst case scenario, some some other other things. And I, I'll toss in one that I think would be horrible. Um, maybe not death, but being in a situation where all of a sudden um, there is a medical situation where one partner has to like permanently uh care for the other partner in the sense of like I, I think most you know yeah just in in a situation where it is now things are never going to be the same mm -hmm. right and, and and maybe not necessarily in terms of acute right like a car or any of that sort of thing but more of like a chronic mm -hmm. condition yep uh man the, there's just a lot <laughs> there's a lot of things that can go wrong with with your health i mean i Stu, you kind of touch on the emotional side like just what that brings from a financial standpoint from you know also a, a emotional side of seeing your loved one not being in the best place right like having to deal with that type of sickness or uh and you know anxieties or stresses or things that come with that schedule changes all of those things um so all that stuff ties in well from a, from a, from a, i mean we mentioned anxiety and stuff but from a mental standpoint depression yeah anxiety like <laughs> right all of those all of those things <laughs> right all, 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 all of them for sure. Yeah. And, and something else that may happen if, if, if a child is being raised in a household where there's like a lot of like chronic <clears throat> illness, et cetera, there is a higher potential for that child to potentially to basically think that there's something genetically wrong with me. There's something that's going to happen to me. You know, perhaps I need to resort to medications. Perhaps I don't have trust in my body's natural health not necessarily recognizing that lifestyle choices factor into this, in my opinion, and I think it might be Kibi's opinion as well, much more so than the genetic components. So when you, when, as a child, you're just so heavily influenced and I, I don't want that to happen with my son or daughter. I think that's a good point. Last one, I'll throw this one on there uh, as well is, uh, what about chronic pain? Like having a partner who, who um, yeah, that's the worst. They're complaining all day, complaining chronic. all the time about chronic pain. Yeah, chronic pain, chronic pain. Because let me tell you guys something. Like one of the things that um, you know, uh, you would you would agree that um, having relations with your partner is a pretty have is a pretty important piece of the relationship, a healthy relationship. Yeah. 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 So w w when you're in chronic pain. Yeah. I wanted the last things you want to do, right? Yeah. It's not it's not the time for it, right? And that's actually one of the most common things we see, whether it's chronic uh, uh, knee pain, low back pain, chronic um, muscle pain in such a way that it actually affects our sexual function tremendously. We see that quite a bit. 
um, even to even having um, so much tension around certain muscles, and I won't get too deep into this, that you have uh, <laughs> it, 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 like erectile dysfunction. That's actually a very common thing for on the on the guy side, right? Uh, whether it's from a muscle component, whether it's from a insulin resistant com uh, standpoint, there's actually a pretty common side effect of those things um, is is not not being able to function correctly as a male. Not just that, but also it being not pleasurable, it being like really painful to do that. So I wanted to, to explain that a little bit as to why I'll go into that. So five pretty horrible things, right? And I've lost track of them where we have death, uh, medical, medical debt, we have chronic Care, pain, um, caretaker, caretaker, right? And uh, Emo what, emotional side, right? What emotional side, depression, depression, anxiety, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, things, five, we just came up with five very quick things that will absolutely ruin uh, a perfectly good situation, perfectly good relationship, a perfectly good, um, whether you, whether it's married, non-married, boyfriend, dating, whatever the situation is, those are pretty tough things to deal with. And those are some of the worst things I think I could imagine in terms of just generally speaking in a relationship period, mm -hmm. right? Besides, there, there are a few other things, but those those are definitely top 10 for sure for me. Let me let me ask, are they for you as well before oh, I see? Sure. For sure. Okay, okay cool. For sure. All of them related to your health. Right. right. All of them related to your health. And we haven't even touched things like um, like addiction. Right. So how many things end relationships? So uh, uh, the most one, an obvious one might be like an addiction to spending money, an addiction to gambling, an addiction to like shopping an addiction to like, you know, shop therapy or whatnot, what it be. Uh, an, uh, an alcohol addiction or drug addiction or what some of those other things. These are all health related matters that dramatically impact right our, our relationship. So where am I going with this? What I wanted to get across here is that like our relationships can be dramatically impacted by the quality of our health as individuals. So my next question is, why is it so hard? to get on the same page with people we love about their health? Or is it hard? Maybe it's easy for you. Let me not assume that, all right? Now it's it's pretty difficult. <laughs> like, I don't know, again, about the people that are listening, but like in general, just in my own personal health journey, like with the people that I care about, mainly my spouse and right now, kind of my mom and, you know, a uh, grandmother who are around me and get a chance to see um, the way I eat or the way that I choose to, uh, focus on my health. A lot of times having the conversation when, when you change, when you change a habit or you change a behavior, it just becomes difficult for that person, uh, to change at the same rate. You know, I really think that and that's why it kind of goes back to the first thing I was saying is when you ha have a spouse or, right, you're in a long-term relationship with someone and like there's things that you both have that balance you or that are are clearly different and when it comes to health there's a lot of those things that you know maybe they don't have the same amount of willpower or they don't have the same desires or they don't have the same um i don't know right just idea of their health and so it really comes around like hey well can we have a shared vision of what health looks like can we have a shared vision of where we're going because oftentimes our individual ideas are separate are different and so that's why it might be met with some resistance or it's met with a little bit of like ah, i don't know a little uncertainty i don't know because that's not what they were thinking about from their health so um, i think a lot of it has to do with the partner right the spouse that you have the the, the girlfriend or boyfriend that you have and then what your dynamic is um because I know for me and my wife, like one of the big things for us is like our, our willpower is different. Our, our desires are different. Our, uh, our discipline levels are different. And a lot of those things come into play when we start having the health conversations of what we're putting in our mouth and how we're moving our body and how, you know, how often we're doing it. It's just different. So 
I, I do think it's a difficult conversation a lot of times to get on the same page, but it's possible. It's just, it takes some time, I think. I think, um, I think it can be so difficult because there's such a lifestyle component associated with health and trying to, trying to like trying to partner with somebody with a drastically different lifestyle, you know, a foodie compared to a hyper health individual, you know what I mean? Like the types of foods and the, the types of restaurants and experiences around food that they're going to have are going to be different. One person's going to be going in thinking, okay, what is, what is the most optimum fuel source I can get? The other one's going to be going into it with what is the most amazing taste experience that I can have from this. And then all of a sudden your restaurants are different. Your, your, your desires to structure your day around your fuel versus your taste are very different. So I think that can be really challenging. Um, so for me personally, I've had troubles in past relationships where I wanted to, I wanted us to become healthier and others wanted to stay where we're at. And it just causes just another source of conflict. Um, I think where this is even more difficult is talking from generation to generation. You know, my parents are very, very close to the chest when it comes to any type of health concerns they may be having. They're in their, they're in their mid seventies now. Um, <clears throat> so there's stuff coming up and they don't necessarily want to talk to me about a lot of this stuff or they've been conditioned on what it means to be healthy and they don't want <clears throat> new ideas coming in that may break any type of belief system they have. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, you hit on a couple of things. I definitely want to touch here. And, um, let me let me let me do a quick news or noise here and let's let's drop some ideas on this because when i say health slash nutrition all right but but let's say nutrition let's say nutrition but we could cover all of health is like religion all right news or noise go ahead and expand a little bit on what you what, what that what you hear when i say that and i'll, I'll go on that i think I think it's news, but go go ahead, Stu. Did you have a, did you have one? Okay, uh, yeah. I, I think it's definitely news yeah. because you know some people really really treat their their foodie life or their health life like a religion, like it is like a disciplined, stapled, heavily indoctrinated belief system that they hold on to. Yeah, and I'll propose that. So shifting now again to answering my question, which is why is this so difficult? Why is it so difficult to get on the same page with the people you love? about health, particularly significant others. And I, I would say it's starting with, because health can be like religion, right? It's a lot, it has a lot to do with what did you grow up with? What did you grow up being modeled? Where did you grow up? What did you grow up uh, 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 practicing within your family? What did you grow up being, thinking was significant, not significant? And to try to switch somebody's religion because they're with you, you can agree is a pr pretty pretty difficult thing to do, right? So hence, hence why you get a lot of relationships where parents, significant others kind of pre-select. It's like, hey, listen, if you want things to go smooth, you might want to end up with somebody that already has these things in place, right? Have you guys seen that at all? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think this is one of the things we overlook, all right, is that we, we might talk about, you know, hey, person I might consider being with for a really long time. Um, how many kids do you want to have? Where do you want to live? How what kind of job do you want to do? We might go through all these different things, but I don't I don't I don't ever hear of anybody having a discussion. It's like, hey, what are your concepts of health and how our family should 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 run? Yeah. I don't really know if people are having that type of discussion, but I actually think be, if you elevate, if you switch it to think about, hey, health, like, because health equals lifestyle, if you switch health to religion, the word religion, I think we start to think about it differently. Yeah. And how it hits. But it's, it's, it's a question of like, how important is it? Like, again, thinking back in my own relationship, health was not important when we met. It just wasn't right. So then the question becomes like, when does it, when do we start having that conversation? If we're talking our right spouse relationship, it's like, it's okay. Well, it's when, when does someone start thinking about their health? Right. That's maybe a bigger question. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, and Stu, I'd love to get your take on this as well. I think what I'm, what I'm suggesting, uh, is suggesting is that the conversation comes a lot earlier. Right. The conversation comes during the dating process as, as, cause listen, not, our parents didn't know a lot of things, right? Or, you know, and not to say they also know a lot of things. I'm not saying our parents are dumb, but uh, what I am saying is from generation to generation, we can observe. And there's some things that my parents have passed on to me that I'm able to have that conversation a lot earlier than they did. Hey, you might want to look at this, right? A little earlier. So maybe it's one of those things that, and, and I'm just suggesting this, this is just a thought. This is not some, some open and shut case um but we have that conversation a lot earlier is and hey significant either like how do you feel about this is this important to you right and i'm suggesting that it is because listen look at where we started this conversation and some of the worst things that can happen in a relationship right and what and even if you want to tie it to money because we definitely talk about oh, well maybe we don't chris might disagree maybe we don't talk about money earlier in the relationship like we should right we don't. but it's one of those things that can heavily affect um, what quality of life that you're living. Okay. Dude, I, want, I want to get I want to get some thoughts from you real quick. <clears throat> I, I think it's massive because you know, we've talked about health as a religion, health as a lifestyle. Um, <clears throat> it if you don't have these conversations, you could potentially be getting locked in with somebody that has completely different health priorities than you. You know, the, like how you want even even really crazy stuff i've always been i've actually been told that i have like an interview process when i date people like i actually <laughs> kind of take them through a list of questions because i'm i'm very particular with what i'm looking for right i know the lifestyle i want i've visualized that i've planned that out i know what i need and what my desire but if you begin to have these challenging conversations the earlier the better you're just saving yourself problems in the future rather than you get to a point where you guys can no longer see eye to eye because you want to live very different health lives if there's if there's no way to maintain synergy i mean for somebody that's extremely healthy dating somebody that's extremely unhealthy that healthy person may feel a lot of pressure all the time with like this dragging down sensation it's very hard to be surrounded by somebody that has the complete opposite priorities of you and you to stay on track with that I really commend individuals out there that are able to stay hyper healthy when their partner is not. I think that's hard as shit. That's not something I want. I want to, I want to have positive influence around me. So you got to talk about this stuff early because, because why not? Some people are so quick and desperate just to get into the relationship. You may get into a relationship that you got to get out of and you could have avoided a whole lot of wasted time and energy by talking about this stuff up front. I think I think it's critical because <clears throat> another component that I've observed is that not every lifestyle is necessarily right for everybody. So to think that you can, hey, listen, you know, I'm attracted to this person. We work in these ways. So later on, we can address some of these things. I think oftentimes it's a fool's errand. Either accept it for what it is and know that you have no expectation for it to necessarily be something different in the future, right? Or start out stating that, hey, this is an important piece of everything that we're putting together and consider that, is this something you would at least consider working on? The person tells you, no, you got to believe them. Okay. And hopefully, that, hopefully that's how the conversation goes uh, because a lot of this comes down to what I see quite quite often. And I'm switching over to just seeing what I survey and talking to a lot of couples, talking to a lot of folks is person, husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend finds this new thing. And they're like, I want to share this with you. And this will go to my second point here, which is communicate pure poor communication, poor communication. I want to share this with you. One, because I want you to feel as good as I feel. Two, because I want to do this with you. I want to take this journey with you. And this will be a lot of fun. And three, I clearly see this has done me some good and I wanted to, to do you some good. But this is how the communication actually takes <laughs> takes place. Right? It's like, hey, you should work out. <laughs> <laughs> you, what um, do you mean? You, what are you saying you, about my body? Yeah. Like, um, hey, you want to order pizza? But no, no, I don't really eat pizza no more. <laughs> Since when? 
<laughs> bro, I'm on our first date. We went, <laughs> we went about pizza, right? So I see this quite a lot, right? It's like, here, I made you some juice. <laughs> Right. So I see the, the why is this so difficult? How does this actually play out? Is that the communication is broken. It's not so maybe we don't have. What if you're not able to have this conversation early on in the com in the relationship? It does not mean it's all doomed. It, I think the next thing it comes down to is how are you communicating? Yeah. How are you communicating? And then my second my, my piece off of that is and if fourth piece here and I'm running through them quickly is, is intention is key. Intention is key. So are you sharing this thing with your partner because um, of good intentions? Like you actually mean well for them to, 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 to experience this? Or are you sharing this because of you have some ulterior motives, right? You, 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 you know, you maybe you want to see them look a particular way. You want to see them do a particular thing. You want to see something happen. Or do you are you coming from a place of love? And I think being able to communicate that to your partner and be like, hey, I really care about you. I recently learned that X, that uh, uh, eating the way that we've been eating can lead to X, Y, and Z. You know, I want to work with you and putting to get something together that can, you know, eventually switch, switch over our lifestyle to a healthier lifestyle. Here's some of the research that I've been doing or here's some of the stuff that I've been doing. What do you guys take on that? Communication is key. I mean, you're hitting the nail on the head it, with everything in a relationship. If we're going to talk relationship, anything, communication is key. And I think, again, you've been seeing it because you work with people down this path. But un but understanding that, like, most times it's just not present. The information is not presented in the best way to the significant other, to the spouse, to the girlfriend, boyfriend. Right. It's uh, very much so. Like you said, it comes off kind of how that person thinks about it. Um, and there can be a lot of, again, uh, damage done just by how you approach or how you talk about or communicate that thing. So I believe that a thousand percent. I think that's all areas. Again, we dive, we're diving into the, the health conversation, but uh, proper communication is key. Proper setting, proper tone, proper language, all of it is important. Yeah, well put, man, because it really does come down to all of those other things. <clears throat> it's not just the word choice, the body language, the tone, et cetera, the timing of when you bring something up. Uh, you know, you mentioned how intention is so important. And I think verbalizing your intention, what is your why in bringing this up? Um, making sure that you're not just presenting it in a bossy way, like do this, do that, do that. We, we don't we don't want necessarily a partnership like that. I think typically that's something more reserved for like a parent or a boss or something. We, we, you may be seeking a different type of power dynamic, maybe something more equal with your partner. So when communication is just structured around becoming bossy because you have good intentions, like go work out, like, okay, cool. <laughs> like why, why is that important to you? Cause right now without you telling me why you want, you're telling me to go work out. Are you telling me I look fat? Are you telling me you don't like my body? Or is it more of like a preventative thing or like a lifestyle or maybe you're concerned about my mood? Like, you know, open up a little bit, expand on why you are sharing suggestions with your partner and recognize that it could be you alluded to this really, really well earlier. You know, you can you can spend your whole life trying to change your partner. And I've actually seen a lot of really good quotes on how that is the number one way to have a failed marriage and a terrible life is to spend your entire marriage trying to change somebody. So if you have conversations up front about like, you know, these are the things that are important to me and you look for those things in other people, then you don't have to try and change somebody. You can accept them for who they are. Look forward. If nothing changes with this person or whatever, am I still going to be happy with that? So like just taking the time to verbalize your intention can just save your partner from making assumptions as to why you're telling them to go work out. Yeah, I appreciate that. So guys, to recap a little bit before we shift fully over into some of the things, some of the tips uh, that we can utilize to have better, to be more on the same page with our significant others and people we love when it comes to health is I want folks to consider the following. I want to consider that 
not being on the same page with your significant other, with your people you love when it comes to health can be very costly. Just as costly as like not being on the same page when it comes to money, when it comes to religion, right? It can be very stressful, very costly. And we've named some of those earlier in the episode. If you didn't see that, you can definitely go go watch those. But I mean, it can probably be one of the most costly ways because it affects literally everything. And there are a lot of reasons why we're not on the same page when it comes to, to health and our, the people that we love. And it could be anything from, we're, we're coming from different backgrounds. We've seen different examples. We have literally different genetic makeups. Like we're coming from totally different parts of the world. So we live life a little differently. Our nutrition is a little different. Uh, things we prefer are a little different. What we habits we built are different. Um, how we think about health, our education background is different. Right. What we know about health is different as we come into the relationship. And um, so th I think that's very important to consider. Even w with that taken into consideration, communication can be some a place where a lot of people break down or or find that things aren't working. Is and although maybe we're all on the same page, we do have a similar background, et cetera, but me communicating to you what i'm looking to have happen whether it's early in the relationship while late in mid in the relationship or later in the relationship is extremely is very critical how we present it and then even behind that communication what is your intention right checking our intention i think this is this is particularly speaking to my guys right checking your intention about how it goes because it can come off and i'll share a story here in a bit it can come off terribly regardless of how even regardless of how it, how it's done etc uh, before we switch over to kind of some of the things we can implement to to maybe have better conversations or be on the same page set better intentions um question is have you ever been in a situation where you did not communicate it well where your intention wasn't correct where things fell off uh because you wanted to get on the same page with somebody you cared about, whether that is, um, it, whether it's to share something you have experienced for yourself that you were super excited about, or or just wanting to make a, a change for, for the better in terms of how you live in life. And I think I've had many, many, many of those, just being in, being a health coach in general and being in relationships i've had many of those where i've had difficulty just taking off my coaching hat right and one thing my wife has told me is like listen like you do this for a freaking living like i don't okay i don't do this for a living and when you always have that hat on it actually makes me less enthusiastic about going along with it and being enthusiastic about it if you can just take that hat off right and talk to me as husband and wife as somebody you care about and just on a basic level and also just not as much right quite frankly i'll be more excited to do it on my own god damn it right and you know she said it much nicer than i probably have said anything and it really kind of hit me and, and not just that and also in a relationship with one of my best friends was like I always the way it was presented he that this is exactly what he told me he was like hey listen like I don't want to talk I don't want to feel like I'm not doing what I need to do all the time and that's how I feel like when you talk to me about health like I'll and this is where I realized my tip number one comes into play I actually do better when I just see you do it and sometimes I ask you questions about what you're doing lead into my tip number one model it don't preach it and this might be this might be more for me this is something i i definitely learned for myself is model it don't preach right here it. with you bro <laughs> right? All of too many girlfriends say don't fucking coach me i'm like i'm sorry I, I'm, I'm doing my best there you go yeah there you go so it's situations you guys have been in where where maybe you, you didn't do you didn't do a great job of either setting the right intention communicating it well or, or being on the same page with uh, your significant other or or somebody else. It doesn't have to be your significant other. And what you took from that, um, for me, it was model it, don't preach it. 
Oh, I, I'd love to hear that from each of you. That'd be great. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, great story. <laughs> cool. cool, cool. Um, so yeah, for me, the, the, the model it, don't preach it, lead by example, uh, right there with you. Uh, it's so easy to be in this state where our job is to analyze and like reflect and like help somebody grow. Someone's paying us to do that. That's a, that's a service we offer. We did not, our, our partner did not choose us for free coaching. Like that's, they, they want a different dynamic coach to client is a very particular dynamic it's very different than husband, wife, or, or partner, et cetera. So I think, uh, you know, for me personally, that that's a trap I've fallen into before. And I have to catch myself regularly because I'm so used to having these conversations day in and day out that it's just natural for me to still have that magnifying glass on the people around me. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. I think, uh, on my side, if I, if I were to think about kind of how this has played out before in the past, with my spouse right with with my wife and having the conversation my intentions were always in the right spot right like i always had the right intention um people her living her best life right and right those types of things uh but my communication has naturally been off right in general like our, it's something me and my wife have always worked on is our communication when we either need something from one another or want something we're in, we're, we have a special dynamic because we're in business together, you know? So we already play the business partner kind of dynamic and also the husband and wife dynamic. Um, so a lot of times when you add on different dynamics, you have to figure out kind of uh, the best ways to communicate in those dynamics and the health dynamic it would come off like business. The conversation would be business partner-ish about what changes need to be made, but yet we're having the, we're doing it from a husband and wife standpoint because we're talking about personal changes. And the communication was, you know, not, not in the place that it needed to be. And I know one of the things that my wife always says about me is that I'm extreme, hey, there you right? Go, and this goes to that corporate athlete that we talk about and that like, when when i'm going to do something like i am going to do it i put my mind to it i'm going to continue to push like there's no feelings that get in the way no emotions and then i try to make her do it the way i do it but that's not how she operates and then i don't communicate that properly and that's where that has that that path had led us uh down before um, and it still happens to this day just because, right, learning how to communicate is one of the toughest things, especially as you get into different topics. And as you brought up today, could be how health could be so tight knit to us, close chested, right? Like very much so around like religion and those things. That's why the communication has to be on point. Um, and that's where I think the areas of opportunity lie most for me. That's powerful, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, areas of opportunity. I like that phrase. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to use that more often because we definitely, uh, I have areas of opportunity as well. I see Boku coins. You know, the video game we have with coins, yeah. of coins to be picked up in those areas for sure. So I, I want to just kind of run through it real quick, and and uh, if you guys want to add to the list of um, kind of takeaways, and I as I'm talking, I'm thinking more so. This is more so an issue that I talk to guys about a lot more than I talk to women about um, in terms of, but I do have some, it's, it's probably like a, maybe 60, 40, 70, 30, you know, somewhere in there um, where, but the women always come to me is like, my husband never, he, he never listens to anything. He just does like, just in general, it's, this isn't even about health. Like in general, if I told him to not, do this because it's going to kill him. He might be dead, right? So he never listens to anything. And the, and the dudes always come from a perspective of like, uh, I kind of know best. I know this thing and, and I'm trying to get it over to her, but she doesn't want to listen to me either. But a couple of things to consider if you're listening to this and you've been trying to talk to your significant other about how, about their health because you are concerned or because you want to see it better and do better. I mentioned model it, don't preach it. So get yourself right before you try to get somebody else right. 
I see this far too often where I see my guy, you, 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 you're not really in a place to be telling your significant other to get her stuff together because quite frankly, your stuff ain't together yet, right? And I'm sure that annoys her or him quite a bit to be like, who are you to tell me? Especially when I knew I've known you for 10 years <laughs> and we've been sharing a lot of the same habits for however long we've been sharing them. It makes it extremely difficult. So I think one of the best things you can do right off the bat, and it may not be significant other, it could be even your mom who's seen you go through like all types of different stages. Like you are the one that's going to preach to me. No, relax. Right. So it makes it a lot harder for people to listen to, to that coming. So model it, don't preach it, get yourself right. And they're always watching. This is one thing we know for sure. They are always watching. So as they see you go, let them come to you. That's what I see. Set the right intention. Why do you want this person to, 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 to do better? To, to why do you want it to be better? What is it? And I think digging into that why has helped me personally a lot in the past kind of cut out a lot of the miscommunication because when i find that why i can go to that person and express to them and speak to them from the level of why not from the level of you should do this all right so i think that's incredibly important um i'll say remove yourself as coach even if you are a coach you're not their coach all right all right is this just for me today Golly, all right. Wow, buddy. that's good to remember, man. That's good. Remove that's yourself good. as coach. Even if you are a coach, you're not their coach. All right. So remove yourself as coach and stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Share what you've been doing, not what they should do. All right. Share mm -hmm. what you've been doing, not what and how it's helping you. All right. And if you ask for permission to say, hey, do you is this something you're interested in? If they say no, then it's a no. Stop right there, right? Um, dream together, especially significant others. Dream together. So, hey, uh, part of why I, I see us being in our 40s and 50s and still running around and traveling and walking on our own two feet and doing all these different things together, you know, I want to invest in that now. That means I want I want us to get to, 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 to together and, and invest in that now. Um, so I just saw people yes. in comedy. So I was like, what's going on? Um, and then your wife heard you. He's like, he said I should do what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then <laughs> and then I would say, ask for their intake input. What do you think? How do you see this? What do you want to happen? Because we don't really know. Sometimes we're coming to the situation. Speak for myself again. Sometimes I'm coming to the situation. What I would like to see, I don't even take time to ask. What is it that you want to see? Oh wait, you're totally you. Your health goals are that. Oh wow, those are very different than my health goals. But I'll support you in reaching those health goals for you. Right? They're very different than mine. What? You're yeah. That's what you want. Wow. That's not what I want. And I see that quite a bit. Right? Some people are like, I'm shocked. I'm like, wait. But then I have to be like, that's you're living different lives, right? Yeah. And then I'll say the last one that I have here, and I love to see if you guys can add or take away from that is uh, get professional help. Goes along with removing yourself as coach is getting somebody else that you can blame. And uh, I've taken I've taken a lot of blame in, in situations where I, I'm literally being paid to take the flame, right? Hey, listen, I didn't say this, coach did. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Get that. Get that help. Get that coach in there that can work with you guys and kind of be that 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 middle person, that expert on the outside that can that can speak into the situation. And you can all reference like can almost play a referee a little bit in that situation. If they were if they if they will. I and I know a lot of you guys are thinking this. Yeah. If they will agree to it. Yeah. Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. And that's okay too, all right? But then maybe get them their own individual person to work with. Maybe they maybe they're tired of you. Maybe they're tired of you. Maybe they just don't don't want to hear you anymore, all right? All right? Maybe they need their own space. Uh, and this has worked out for me and my wife quite a bit. Is she needs her own fitness world, and she's thriving, right? Her own fitness world away from what I'm doing, which and she's doing quite well, you know. So 
maybe that's the situation that works. So I think figure it out. If the intention is to really to get that person to where they want to go, be flexible in how they get there. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean they get there how I envisioned them to get there or how you envisioned them to get there. So guys, was that helpful? Anything to add or take away from that in terms of uh, pulling from this from this episode as having difficult conversations about health with people you care about? Nah, yeah, absolutely. There was a ton in there, man. I thank you for kind of uh, lay, laying it out in that manner. The thing that just keeps popping up over and over for me is that communication piece, right? On the back end, you just talked about getting a coach. We talked about this last week on the episode, why it's so important to have a coach in all these areas. I say the same thing about money, right? Like if you're not on the same page with your spouse about money or your significant other about money, get a coach, get someone in the middle of it. Right, start having the conversation. Think you think of it this way, she thinks of it this way. How do we get into the middle? Right, like what are we both saying? Same thing on the health side. Uh, I see that that side is important as well. So those two things are my big takeaways: the communication piece, how we really have to work on the communi- how the message is communicated to your to your loved one, um, and then uh, also just putting somebody in the middle and saying, hey, if we're gonna do this, especially for spouses. We, 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 we should have a coach. We should have somebody guiding us through. So that's two main takeaways, man. Mm. Uh, for me, I think the reminder of uh, <clears throat> I'm not my partner's coach um, and, and she's definitely not mine. If, if I start getting the feeling that I'm getting told what to do, I'm going to buck it off. And I got to remember that it's probably the same way for her. Um, so I think, you know, really just I think stressing the importance of of communication, mentioning the intention. I think everybody out there, if you're trying to get your partner on board with this stuff, accept the fact that they may have different priorities. You can't spend your whole life trying to change them. But if you are trying to, you know, have some type of positive change for your partner, just go ahead and recognize it's important that you address the attention, intention. You can't just like, come at them from the why level. I like how you put that. Don't just t- start telling them what to do because nobody wants a bossy partner. We all joke about it. We don't want that. So, you know, fellas, that's it for us today. Uh, If you guys like what you heard, subscribe, smash that like button. Tune in next Monday for another (laughs) video. Share, share, share with somebody that would love or hate this episode because all press is good press. So until next time, keep living the good life. Stop bossing your partner around. (laughs) Welcome to the good life.